Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer with For and From St Catherine's. This week we're looking at the story of John the Baptist. It starts off as a pre-Christmas story because John was born about six months before Jesus. Uh, in fact, we celebrate the birth of John the Baptist on the 24th of June, exactly six months before we celebrate the birth of Jesus on the 25th of December. OK, six months and a day. We've looked at the circumstances that led to John's birth and the circumstances that surrounded his birth, which means we now have to take a great leap of 30 years into his adult life. But I think this is still relevant in the lead up to Christmas because John's job was to prepare people for the coming of Jesus, to prepare people for Jesus's ministry. And as we prepare for Christmas and prepare to celebrate the arrival of Jesus, I think John can help us. So join me for a little bit of wilderness wildness. And before that, join me for our opening prayer. The passage that we have today, which comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3, is exactly the same passage that we had this last Sunday when we were looking at John's expectations of Jesus. But I want to have the same passage again, but look at it from a very different angle, not to look at it from what John was expecting Jesus to be like, to, but to look at it from, from how John was interacting with the people, what he was offering to them. Why was it that that what John was doing was so enormously popular that, as I said yesterday, it, he was far more famous than Jesus. Even 10, 20 years after Jesus's life and death, people around the Jewish world knew more about John, it seems, than they did about Jesus. So listen and think, what was going on here? And what was the appeal of this message? In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now, John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. When the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the region around the Jordan, they were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children of Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I've got a bowl of water. In the end, baptism is, is about water. Uh, but what was what was really going on here? Uh, just one basic fact to start off with. John the Baptist did not invent baptism. Uh, baptism is not a specifically Christian ritual. It is a Jewish ritual and the Jews have been doing it for a long time. Uh, what John was doing was picking up on a Jewish ritual. Uh, just in the last few years, they have uncovered an enormous baptism complex next to the temple in Jerusalem. It was there because if you wanted to go and perform rituals in the temple, you had to be ritually clean. So you had to go to the baptism complex outside the temple to get yourself baptised before you could go into the temple. Even today, every synagogue has a baptism pool, an immersion pool. It's a Jewish thing. And John was picking up this Jewish thing, but he was spinning it very, very differently. The problem with, with the priesthood of Jesus's day and John's day was that it was very rich, very powerful and somewhat corrupt. Maybe a lot corrupt, probably depended on who you asked. But the priests were very wealthy and they were very privileged and they held an awful lot of power. John was a priest. 
His father was a priest. Priesthood was inherited. Therefore, he was a priest. He didn't own any land. He wasn't a farmer. He was a priest. That was his job. And he grew up in this priestly environment where the wealthy priests with their wealthy robes put on these rituals like the baptism complex outside the thing and charged people through the nose for it because they had a monopoly. So people knew that although they were drawn to their religion and committed to their religion and had a faith in God, they, they, they knew that at the same time they were being fleeced by the priests. And that caused a, a lot of disgruntlement, of course. So John broke away from that completely. And he left the temple and he left Jerusalem and he went down through uh, into the Jordan Valley. And, and he, he set up his stall there where the water was free, where the water simply flowed down the river. And, and you could baptize yourself to your heart's content and nobody was going to charge you. John didn't wear expensive priestly robes. He wore camel's hair with a leather belt round his waist, which sounds a bit bizarre. But... People could see in him that this man wasn't trying to get hold of their money. This man wasn't trying to get political power. This man, this priest, was giving them God. Not selling them God, but giving them God. And people responded to that with huge enthusiasm. And the message that John had is that, you know, immerse yourself, clean yourself, make a fresh start. That's what repent means. It means have a, have a new set of thoughts, a new thinking, a new mindset. It's not about apologising for your mistakes. It's about have a, have a new start and be fruitful. Be fruitful. Put it into practice. It's not about just simply performing rituals. It's about changing your life, changing your attitude being God's people, being ready for God. And that still is the message of John the Baptist. Sadly, the Christian church has, well, we've priested it. We've created our own priesthoods. We have our own baptism, which happens to happen in church. It has to be done by a priest. We don't charge people for it, but I think we have in the past. John's message is, no, water is free. God is free. Just change your attitude. Change your life. Be ready for him. It was such a brave thing for John to do, to, to leave his home city, his home region, to abandon all, all the trappings of the privileged lifestyle that he'd had up to that, and, and to go to a new place and to do a completely new thing, to take this well-established ritual, but to totally reinvent it and represent it, and to simply give away the knowledge of the love of God. Such a brave thing for him to do that it was so much just the right thing at the right time in the right way and it captured people's imagination and it didn't just prepare people for the message of Jesus in that little corner of Israel. It actually, it prepared people for the message of Jesus right across the ancient Jewish world. And it leaves me wondering, what can we do? How can we do it? How can we give away the knowledge of the love of God in our day and age? How can we step out beyond our traditions, beyond our buildings, beyond our rituals, and capture people's imagination with the love of God? I know the question. I don't know the answer. More prayer required.
join me in Jesus' prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Just about brings us to the end of our daily prayer for today. A little bit more of John the Baptist coming up tomorrow. Um, we're now in tier three. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference, but it is an expression of real concern that infection rates in London are shooting up and we need to do something about that. We need to be extra careful and extra vigilant. For that reason, we're offering our Christmas services both online and in church. You can choose and each of us needs to make that choice wisely. Coming up this Sunday, uh, Five o'clock in the afternoon, there will be a service of carols and readings in the church, except you would actually be able to sing carols in the church because uh, you can't do that. You can sing carols at home, you can sing carols outside, but not in the church. Nonetheless, we're having a service of carols and readings, but you can also join the service of carols and readings in your own home where you can sing to your heart's content. You can sing as loud as you want. Uh, whether you're joining it in church or, uh, or at home, you will need a candle, any candle will do. A small box of kind, any small box of any kind will do. Some wrapping paper, enough to wrap up the small box and some sticky tape to do the wrapping with. Uh, hopefully you're getting the figure with it. But let's, let's celebrate Christmas. Let's have a wonderful Christmas. Coming up Christmas Eve, we're doing a Zoom carol service. Please pass the message around. This is an opportunity for you actually to worship with friends and family and neighbours, but in each in the safety of your home. Uh, I'm going to post a notice about it in the WhatsApp group, and you can um, you can send the message around. Let people know that if they want to join for a very special home-based Christmas service on Christmas Eve or on the Sunday before Christmas, that they can do it with St Catherine's. Join me in the prayer of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore.